Let me see if I can generate a new link for you. I think I might have fucked it up. No, I, I, I think I see it. You see it's it? Good. It's working, yeah. Hi, sorry guys, technical difficulties. Okay. I will eat myself now. <laughs> bye. Right, bye. Hi everyone. Um, yeah, so we had a little bit of technical difficulties, but uh, I'm gonna be bringing uh, to you guys today a uh, creative photography 101 kind of style class. So my name is Chris Kaiser. My pronouns are she, they. Um, I actually do photography as a hobby, but it's something that I've studied in school while I didn't major in it. I definitely took a lot of classes. I've also like interned at photography studios and um, I actually really enjoy doing photography as a hobby, which is like kind of what you see on my Instagram. So we're gonna go through kind of like my process, like what apps I use, um, kind of photography, like really, really basic creative photography things um, where you can get inspiration from or where you can get uh, additional resources to kind of build small sets and things like that. And then, um, yeah, so yeah, I'll be, my Instagram is curse.kaiser um, and let's start. I'm gonna share with you kind of like presentation I put together to uh, help you kind of understand the process. Okay, I'm sharing my screen. Give me one second. Allow. Okay, awesome. So, should be able to see this. I'm just gonna make sure it's working. I don't wanna have any <laughs> repeat of last time. Uh, so I'm sharing my screen. Um, awesome. Okay, cool. This is working. Awesome. So let's talk about creative photography. Creative photography, at least the way I use it, is definitely to tell stories through fashion and photography. Um, you can see like this is some of the works that I have to the left of things that I've done in the past. Uh, I definitely look to a lot of like fashion photography for inspiration, editorial photography for inspiration. Um, I'm definitely learning as I'm going along, but it's been a really fun process. Um, I've been able before the pandemic to work with some friends. So I'm hoping that maybe after the pandemic, you'll see other people kind of be a part of my body of work. But um, you can see that I also incorporate Olita fashion into my photography a lot. Uh, because it's just uh, one, you know, obviously it's one of my favorite fashion styles. And uh, I just try to figure out ways to like kind of creatively express mood and feeling and things like that while I'm like working on um, the photos that I'm creating to kind of share with everyone else in the world. Okay, next slide. Sorry, it's going to take a little bit for the slide to, I think it's going to take off. Yeah, okay, cool. So next slide. So what is creative photography? Um, creative photography is not necessarily trying to capture like a reality or anything that like the way it is in life. A lot of the times it's it can be like magical realism. It can be um, fantastical. It can be like entire set pieces or it can be something really simple, like, you know, just a really cool accessory um, and like a background that you've created. So, for example, um, I think that in a lot of J fashion actually, and a lot of um, Lolita, you we've, well, we've actually always been exposed to kind of this editorial uh, creative photography. So if you ever looked at like Gothic Lolita um, Bibles, I think we've always seen like those really cool editorials where they put together like a lot of the fashions and they put together a really cute backdrop. Um, you can see with like the Alley Project uh, image all the way to the left of Volume 35, Alley Project is a musician, um, but she also tends to do a lot of really cool editorial photography that you see in the magazine. And I feel like editorial photography and just like this really, really like over the top gorgeous kind of um, magical world that they create with Lolita and J Fashion is something that's always existed side by side as long as you know not so much the fashion existed but as long as the fashion has existed in print so um yeah i can tell you like kind of what my like what my processes or what i look for or like my inspiration, but you can tell, like, I definitely look at um, what GLB was probably, GLB and then like, you know, Vogue and things like that were probably the first time I was exposed to this kind of like really creative photography where like the hair is really like fantastical sometimes or just like, re like something maybe you wouldn't see in like something compared to a street snap. So it's very different from like what we typically see in a street snap. And I feel like a lot of OTT maybe came from this like observation of us seeing these really beautiful, like, whoops, editorial, uh, photographs. So yeah, we have like Tim Walker is an amazing uh, photographer that you should maybe look into if you're getting interested into doing like creative fashion photography. Um, definitely old GLBs, Gothic Lolita Bibles, they have tons of uh, fashion photography um, that you 
sorry, whoops, that you can like get into, like even this one, um, it's uh, Sachi and Nico from GLB, but they have like these, it's really simple. It's just like flowers and flowers and they're like barefoot, but then they did this like really cute, like imagined background, like illustrative background. Um, Creative Soul is like a really good place to look for a reference to Creative Soul is like uh, this black couple in Atlanta that does these really, really beautiful, like fantastical um, photos, like photo sets. And then um, there's a uh, Pierre Gales, which Pierre Gales, like they have done ton, they, they're really big in the fashion world. Um, this is top from Big Bang. Um, Tim Walker, again, like I, I'm, I'm a Tim Walker stan. I really enjoy his photography, but he did his, this is his version of Alice in Wonderland with Ducky Thought. And even like this Nana Kitale uh, Kara ma magazine spread, I think like I kind of was inspired by it too, to create like my new set of photos. So it's really important to look for inspiration in different places, whether it's everyday life and things like that, for you to kind of pull into what your fashion photography concept is going to be ultimately, because you want to tell a story every time you um, do this thing. And I think that that's why we love Lolita too, is because all these photographs that we were exposed to when we were, if you were reading JLB or you had the opportunity to kind of like expose you to these stories and these worlds and just like really takes your mind and the viewer to like another place, which is really, really wonderful. Um, okay, so the next thing I'm going to get into actually is equipment, because I feel like it might be really daunting because some of these are like very advanced set pieces and very um, over the top, like they require a lot of effort and an entire crew. So I'm going to kind of teach you how to do it at home if it's just you, maybe if you have like someone that could help you, but you don't necessarily need someone to help you. So I'm going to, because a lot of my photos, I shoot myself. Um, I sometimes will get help from my spouse if I, I need help holding something or I need like light set up and things like that. But, um, you know, mostly I, I shoot uh, the photos myself. Um, occasionally I will ask for her help. So um, I'm going to show you how to do this on your own and what you need. So, yeah. And yeah, remember, it's always been a part of the fashion. I think I think people have to remember that that's really important, that like we've always been exposed to this type of photography. So when you see my photography on Instagram, like I think you should think of it with that lens of like it's editorial. and It's like to show off the clothes and the style and the hair and kind of give a mood and aesthetic that uh, is inspiring. OK, next slide. Let's see. OK, so equipment. Let's see, there's a little bit of a delay, so just give me one second. Awesome. So equipment. These are kind of like my go-tos for equipment. Um, I really, really, really recommend this um, if you're starting out and you do not need a professional camera or anything like that. A lot of uh, mobile phones now have really, really, really great um, cameras. Just like the quality is really good. You can manipulate a lot of aspects of the photograph. Um, I sometimes will shoot on uh, my phone, but you can, I'll, I'll show you kind of like what, what the different stages are. So the first thing that I kind of recommend is getting a soft box. I know that people tend to say, oh, a ring light is really great. But the thing is that when you're trying to do more like fashion photography or just more photography in general, you want this like really nice diffuse light. Like you don't want this big giant, like bright circle, which might work for like maybe makeup and things like that. But I think when you're trying to just do photos, even if it's portraits, I really recommend like a soft box light. Um, it has reflectors on the inside, so it has like this this metal foil on the inside. You can remove the soft box part and just have like the light exposed onto your face. It's a really good piece of equipment um, to buy. And then all this stuff is collapsible, so you can like collapse it and put it away, and then you don't have to worry about it. Um, you don't need you you kind of need some space to put away the equipment, but not too much space. Um, the next thing I'm going to recommend is the Bluetooth like shutter release for your camera phone. So this one will be really good if you're shooting on your own. You basically point the camera at you, you hook up the Bluetooth to this, and then you just literally press a button and you're good, like perfect. It'll take all the shots for you. You can set up a self timer on your phone and do it this way. So that way, if you need to like tuck the, the, little, the little remote into your pocket or you need to like kind of toss it while you're posing for your photos, you can you can do it this way and it's um, it's really, really great. So if you don't know what it is, I definitely recommend if you're doing a lot of self portraits to get this. And then um, I have two recommendations for like tripod, which is like your regular everyday tripod. Uh, get the one that has the phone uh, holder specifically because you don't wanna get the one that only holds camera unless you're, you have a camera that you can um, use. 
but a tripod's really good. They come in different sizes and things like that, but you want one that's like sturdy, your phone's not gonna fall over if it's a windy day and you're taking photos outside, whatever the case is. And then the last one is actually a gooseneck tripod. Gooseneck tripods are really good because um, you can get different shots. Like you don't only have to do an overhead shot. Like let's say you want to do a shot from like over your shoulder or you want to like kind of manipulate where the camera is because a tripod is obviously, it's like very, very steady, like sturdy kind of, thing and it doesn't really like you can't do too much <laughs> in terms of angles and things like that but the gooseneck tripod is actually really really great um you can clip it to any surface uh it, it's really really sturdy i really really recommend it so yeah that one's really good okay so this is like optional equipment like <laughs> that you would need um for creative photography uh i think a dish light again like if i had to pick between dish light and ring light i definitely would pick a dish light dish light has like really nice diffuse light um it's not super harsh like a ring light is um a backdrop stand if you have space for it they can get they can be really big or really small it just depends on what style of photography if you're doing you know um, head to toe photography, you know, full cord shots, full body shots. You might want something bigger. If you're just doing like portraits from like, you know, the waist up, you can get something smaller. Then you can get seamless backdrops. They come like fabric seamless backdrops, which are kind of nice. And then there's also the rolls. Um, and there's different price points, just like read reviews. You can find them almost anywhere, Amazon, b &H photo, et cetera. And then lastly, Props. Everyone needs props. Like if you want to make your photo really different, I definitely recommend getting a prop, whether it's flowers from a flower shop, balloons, even a sword. If you want to live out your RPG dreams, like live your best life. Um, I definitely recommend it's optional, but it makes your photos really different when you have a prop that's not just like, here's my purse or here's like my shoes or here's like a cool hat. It really brings like your um, photo to another level when you have like a really cool prop like that. So, yeah. And then lastly, these are more like advanced uh, <laughs> tools or things that you might need um, to take photos. So for this, the, the one that uh, the photo that I did for Dandy Puppetois, uh, it was actually I did it on a projector. So I went on I went on on my computer and found like an image of a heart and loaded it onto my projector. And um, it's really it's like a game changer, honestly, because you can do like all kind of shapes, all kind of like it just makes like you can take your photos to another level with something really simple. I just had a projector anyway because I wanted a projector for myself, but you can buy like really small ones that are really cheap, like under 50 bucks and you can put like any image on it and it just like takes the photo to another level. That's how I got that spotlight effect. Um, and I could do it with any graphic. So that's like the really cool thing is if you want to develop a special graphic, you can make a special graphic and then slap it on the projector and then you could just project it onto yourself. Second thing that's like really amazing is, uh, so typically in photography, when you wanna do this really cool kind of like two-tone color um, photography, or you wanna do like all red or all like um, a single color, you use gel lights. But the thing about gel lights is sometimes like you have to pay a lot of money to get really high quality ones. And um, depending, like I've, I've burned my, not burned, but I've melted my gel light, uh, the little gels that go on top of the light many times and it's really annoying to constantly buy new ones or find the right light i don't want to deal with it anymore so i recommend um full color led light bulbs so for example if you buy the uh, softbox you can take these led light bulbs and you can plug them in and then you can do any color you want that's how i got these photos like this with this two-tone so i had one light bulb here that was blue and one light bulb here that was orange and then the thing about it is that they have different types so they have one that's a remote control and they have one that is a, um, a app. I have this one, it's by Govee, G-O-V-E-E. -E. So I'll like also post this, uh, this slideshow later so if people wanna look at it at their own pace. Um, but the Govee one is really cool because you can make any color you want. It has like a full color wheel and you can do anything. You can do pink, blue, pastel, baby blue, like anything at all. And it's like super, super, super smart like idea. I, I don't know, I was just like, oh, why didn't I think of this sooner? And then if you want a, um, camera like there's dslr mirrorless dslr i definitely suggest that you do research i specifically use the sony a6100 yeah 6100 um camera it has uh lenses that you can change out it's a mirrorless dslr i can take it anywhere usually sometimes you kind of get in trouble if people think you're you figure out this big dslr and they're like oh you're trying to take pictures here like get out i almost never get kicked out of any place 
even if I'm dressed like weird, weird and take, you know, bring this camera out because it's a small compact camera um, and people tend to like not really care. It has an app so that if I want to do the self timer thing, I can do the self timer thing via the app. And then once I take the photo, it goes directly to my phone. Just so you know, my process is almost all done on mobile. I do not, I, I very rarely use a computer actually to process my photos or to take my photos. Um, it's usually done with a camera and app and then my phone. So yeah, this is like my, my go-to kind of uh, thing. Okay, so here are like free apps that you can use. There's tons of apps, but honestly, I think like the one that you should 100% get is Lightroom. I think Lightroom is, especially because it's free now, only for mobile. So you it's free for your phone and your tablet only. It's not free, I think, if you use a desktop version. But Lightroom is like amazing. Like I, I can't recommend it enough in terms of like, Sometimes when you see my photos, I try to go for this really like cinem cinematic feel or like this movie feel. Um, and it's this is the app that I use. And then once you kind of create a preset, the really cool thing is that you can then like stick those presets onto other photos to kind of mimic the same thing. And I'll show you how that's relevant later. And then the other thing I use is Line Camera. Line Camera is really, I know it's like a really simple app, but um, it's really great uh, just to do really basic editing. Um, you can do some color editing. You can do like, you can blur backgrounds. You can do like lots of things. Um, but these are the two apps that I basically use the most to take my photos. Um, I use Line a lot for selfies and then Lightroom to kind of edit my actual photography. Even if it's like an outfit shot, I will like edit it in Lightroom because the thing is like, let's say your lighting setup is always the same. Once you have your presets, you just like basically copy, paste, copy, paste, and it makes your work like really fast. Um, some people are like, oh, you're so fast at editing photos. And it's because I basically have everything set up and then just like, boom, click, I'm done. Um, I don't like to spend a lot of time um, doing doing too much on, on, on these photos. So those are the two apps that I recommend. Okay, paid apps. So these paid apps, um, I've, I've started using them recently and I'll, I'll show photos later, but um, Pixar and PhotoLeap are really cool apps that you can use. They kind of basically would be a good replacement for Photoshop, which is why you might have to, but I feel like the interface is easier. So you may have to pay for them. Sometimes they have monthly, they have one time uh, fee or like a yearly fee that you pay. And you can do these really cool, um, like, you know, really fantastical, just like different type of photos. Like, I mean, I took this picture of the girl with the umbrella. So I was like, oh, what if you put like a lolita in a teacup, you know, and you're able to, the, the app is powerful enough for you to do that, which is why you have to kind of, I think you have to pay for it. But um, I think it's definitely worth it. It's definitely worth paying um, to, to make, to kind of just elevate your everyday photos. So you're not just having like the same regular photo every day. Okay. So this is like really important about my photography in particular. A lot of it is actually heavily edited for color. So um, if you look like I don't um, tend to have always the right setup or the photos don't come out the way I want. So I definitely depend a lot on Lightroom to kind of give my pictures that extra like oomph. You know, and then once you you figure it out, you can like always again, like I said, you can copy paste the settings over and over again and you don't really have to worry about it. But like, for example, like you can see like this photo, it's like completely different. Like it's really dark. There's a floor here. You know, the color of the background is different. And so I, I wanted, oops, the idea for this one was that it was supposed to be like a phantom king was the idea. So that's why I'm talking about like, you know, you have ideas and you have like, um, concepts behind your photography and then you like implement it so that one was like i'm a phantom king so that's why it's like a misty background it's blue um very like i also saw this uh fashion cover with cardi b where she had a really 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 long dress and she was like standing it was a, it was a, this is like how much i pay attention to regular fashion but it was a shirapelli i think dress that she was wearing and she looked really long and i was like i want to be really long so i like took like the blur to in, in photoshop which you can also do in line too. And I like just like pull the whole thing down to make me look like a long, big ghost person. Um, that's kind of <laughs> how I think about my ideas and what I want to do. Um, when it came to like the, for example, this one, like you can see the colors weren't popping as much from the photo. So I went and like kind of punched it up in Lightroom. I like put, you know, okay, I want more orange on this side. So it kind of looks like I have like a Too Faced. I think my lips were just like, maybe not on this one, but I think my lips were like a little bit, like sometimes if I draw my, my, my lipstick a little crooked. I'll like nudge it a little bit. You know, I, I try not to go too, too hard on those type of things. For this one, you can see that like this was like the photo and then I really wanted to have this like dreamy red feel. So I went and, you know, fixed all the colors. And that's like a really important uh, thing in my photography is just like 
making the colors really pop and making the colors kind of tell a story versus, you know, you can have like these photos, like they're really nice by themselves, but I feel like editing them and getting the color right is like so important. <laughs> Yeah, I want to be that tall too. Yeah, right. It's like just giant person. You want to be like the the Resident Evil uh, woman, the nine foot vampire woman. <laughs> um, but yeah, this this one, this is another one where I was like, kind of like, oh, I was inspired by spring, and then I was like, little Bo Peep because like the big triple fortune bonnet. Um, but you can see the original, like a lot of the colors aren't there, and it's not as dreamy looking. So I had to like go in and like punch up the colors and make it pop. This picture um, is a picture of uh, uh, Emily. She's like a really awesome model, and I was like, oh, but I want her to look like cool and mysterious, and like maybe she's a you know a Harry Potter character or like a Slytherin. I don't know something like that, but. Uh, you know, I like this was uh, I think two years ago. I took this photo when I was inspired by that. But it, 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 you can see like the difference, like between like this looks more like a story, like she's this mysterious character, versus just like oh, here's a picture of her in some grass. So it's kind of like you know how you elevate your photography to tell a story, and then like don't be afraid to edit. Um, but there's like a limit, so we're gonna get into like editing. <laughs> so I think. We have like editing in general. I think there's like a really big misconception about it, about yay or nay, people happy or not happy about it. But let's start with like things that uh, cameras do to people and maybe why they feel inclined to also edit themselves. So cameras are not one to one of like what we see with our eyes and like what it captures. So focal lengths are super important, right? Like just mentioned. Focal lengths. So focal lengths distort your face. So I think sometimes people feel inclined to fix themselves because maybe they look like, maybe you look skinnier in person or you look bigger in person. And then this camera makes you look not like yourself or not how you see yourself in the in the mirror. And that's completely normal. Um, you have to remember that at the end of the day, a camera is like a technological imitation of your, literally your eyeballs. So the focal lengths are super important. They distort your face. Um, so that's also, there's there's actually um, apps too that kind of can help with that type of distortion. But just always keep that in mind that like when you take pictures, the closer you are to a camera, the bigger things are gonna appear, et cetera, et cetera. There's like a lot of photography rules. So I, I just want people to know that like sometimes it's not you, sometimes it really is the camera. Like you can, like, it's like when you have like a really good outfit, a really good like look in person, you're like, wow, I look so good. And you take a picture of it. You're like, this picture does not capture how amazing I look, right? It, it nine times out of 10, it's probably the camera's fault, honestly. Your eyes are way better than a camera will ever be. So just like, you know, be gentle with yourself and like, you know, don't be too harsh on yourself about fixing things in post because I think it's like, it's okay. It's not a big deal. Um, it's also been around since the 1850s, 1850s. Yeah. So since as long as photography has been around, editing has been around and editing a photograph. So if you see this photo right here, this is the original photograph. This is the edit. Same thing with this. This is the original photograph. This is the edit. And this like style of photography is like that really popular, like dreamy, like 1950s, like all the way into, I think the seventies, that style carried over. Um, it's all edited. It's not like someone took a picture and then she just looked like that. Like they had to basically, you know, go onto the film and, you know, edit edit the negative or edit the actual, you know, uh, photograph uh, to get it to look like that. Same thing with like makeup, makeup YouTubers do it where they kind of punch up the colors because sometimes like you don't, you don't have a full studio to control everything, right? So if you need to like punch things up, if you need to punch up a color because it's not the color that you want. If you want to change the color, you're like, oh, I wish that this outfit looked like it was blue instead of red. Go for it. Like, I don't really see there's like an issue with it. I do, however, like caution people because it's really like this is like, you know, <laughs> this is Kardashian image, cursed image, but it's like not my business, but like too much editing. And the reason why I say that is because like you don't ever want to like go back and look at a picture of yourself where you've completely changed your features and completely changed what you look like. And then you're like, who's that? And then you're like, get a complex and have to, you know, get surgery or think you have to get surgery to match like this this uh, image that you've created of yourself that's not really you. So I think that's like the, the plus and minus. Like it's fun to do like fantastical editing. Like if you don't have a background and you want to drop that you're like in front of a fantastical castle in Germany or something, go for it. Cause you know what? And no one's traveling anytime anyway. And I don't think anyone's going to care if you know, you're, you're dropping in, you know, cool backgrounds or if, you know, you want a dreamy look and if it's under the context of it being stylized, I think like, you know, 
it's okay, but just, you know, be careful how much you're, you're, you're editing your face and retouching your face and making yourself look kind of like not yourself because you're going to give yourself a complex that you necessarily didn't have before. And so, yeah, focal lengths and an over editing um, are two things that you should pay attention to. So yeah, like don't beat yourself up. Like photography is, I call it an illusionary art. It's like a lot of it is an illusion because really your eyes are much better than a photograph, like a photo could ever be, which is why sometimes you don't need to take pictures of everything and you can just look at life and how beautiful it is by itself because really your eyes are like really, really amazing. So yeah, that's my spiel on editing and like, you know, don't, don't overdo it. But if you need to edit for color and for other things, that's totally fine. Like just, you know, be careful, be, be gentle with yourself and don't give yourself a complex. Okay. So I'm going to go walk you through a really quick edit tutorial on how to get this photo to look like this. So this is just like super cute. It's a, it's a picture of Avina. Um, so you see her out there, uh, there, uh, handle right there. So that's her handle. And then, um, Avina is like super, super, super cute uh, influencer. They like always dress like in these really cute fashions. And I was like asking for submissions, like, Hey, does someone want to submit for a photo tutorial on how to edit the photo to make it look dreamy and cute? I think it was supposed to be this like vaporwave, like visco, cute, you know, dreamy kind of look. Um, I guess there's like also K-pop photos that have the same thing. So I was trying to aim for that with this, uh, with this photo. So I'm going to walk you through kind of like how you do that. Uh, if you want to, run the video, I think. Yeah, so there's a video. So yeah, you're gonna open up the photo in um, in Lightroom. The f so you're gonna import it, you're gonna put it in there. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna, the first thing you're gonna do is go to color. After you go to color, you're going to go to the tint and you're going to tint it all the way to like that really cute, dreamy, cute pastel pink color because you will just want the color to be really, really nice. Um, a lot of it is like personal preference. So you kind of just have to like go back and forth and mess with it. Um, the other thing I go to is like the uh, effects. And so I mess with the clarity. The clarity actually blurs photos ever so slightly. So I'm going to zoom in so you can see it just gives this really cute, like kind of nice little dreamy effect to the photo because it just blurs the lines. If you feel like it's too blurry, I'll show you how to like kind of fix it later but you can, the top three texture clarity all kind of mess with that. You can see like, it makes everything lighter. It makes it all like airy and I don't know, super cute. Um, that's what I do with that. And then, yeah, so I, I'm gonna bring the texture down. You keep seeing me mess with it. <laughs> uh, you can see like up close, you can zoom in. That's like a really great feature with uh, Lightroom is that you can zoom in, zoom out. You can kind of see like how the picture looks up close. So I'm gonna bring the texture all the way down, but I felt like I brought it down too much. So then I kind of will pump up the sharpening. So there it'll be a little bit sharper. So like you don't lose too much detail uh, of the person. Then the thing I'm gonna do is color grading. So color grading is like when you go in, it, it, it's something like I recommend you play around with. So color grading is another thing you go into each sector. So you go into the shadows, you're going to kind of pull the shadows. I want it to have that purple dreamy look. So I'm pulling it more toward purple. So all the, all the dark parts of the photo will have this like purple tint to it. Then I have the mid-tones. So I am gonna look at like maybe adding like a little blue or pink to the mid-tones. You see me kind of mess around with it cause I do a lot of stuff based off like feeling and how like I think it should look. Um, then we're gonna go to the highlights and then I'm gonna add like color to the highlight uh, too. I'm gonna add like just a little bit, I think, I, what was the color I ended up with? I think a little bit of a, you can see me messing around. I'm just like, do, 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 um, pulling everything around. And then I guess I landed on green, um, which I know it's really weird, but it looks really good in the photo. And then there's like global. So global is like kind of the last place that I go to where I um, will overall just, kind of go over everything and like add one more color. So now you can see it's like this really cute purple color. You can see the difference. Like, and so this is like an everyday outfit shot. So you can always, after you're done doing all of this, you can copy paste these presets. Um, so that if you're always taking a photo in the same place in your home, you can just use those presets over and over and over again. Um, the last thing I do is I go over to profiles 
and I add another, there's like these preset filters that Lightroom comes with and I kind of will like mess around with the profile and add like, you know, okay, I want it to be even more dreamy, more cute, more pastel. So I'll just like kind of mess with it. Um, I definitely recommend Lightroom like a hundred percent. It's, it's really, really good. Um, yeah. So you see, like, I think I end up landing on the artistic like 08. Then I'm like looking at it, I'm measuring it. Cause what you have to do to see what the photo looked like before is if you press down on the photo, it will show you what the edit looked like previously. So you're not just like editing blindly. You can kind of see the difference and understand like what you want it to look like. So yeah, you just see me kind of messing around. This is like literally you get to watch my process of exactly how I edit my photos and edit like everything. Um, yeah, once, once I feel like it's good enough, I'm like, okay, cool. Um, I, yeah, I like probably will go to like maybe vignette next. Oh no, I go back to color. Oh yeah, okay. So with the color, the last thing about the color is that like, so if you are, if you have melanin in your skin, if you're melanated, I wanna talk about like how you edit photos so you don't get blown out. Um, usually your skin is gonna fall either under the red or the yellow in the color mix category. So when you go to color, you go to color, then color mix usually you will fall under these two the uh yellow or the red the luminance is the like how bright your skin is going to appear so if you want to mess with the luminance that's really how you get the skin tone to kind of be correct because you don't want to like lighten your skin i think like a lot of like j fashion filters always like lighten your skin and make your skin way lighter than what you want and so you don't want that so the best way to mitigate that is when you go to color mix and usually go to uh luminance and saturation and tone so like also like if you see a photo where your skin is maybe too yellow to this to that uh it, or you don't like the way it looks or the, the light is really harsh you can kind of mess with it that way um yeah so i think that's like almost everything that i do for this photo yeah oh yeah and then also the white so like there's there's uh when you go to light you can go to white and then you can bring the white down so that it's not so bright so your skin doesn't look too blown out um then I add a vignette. That's just my personal thing. I like adding a vignette around <laughs> around the photo. Um, that's under effects. Uh, I still mess with the clarity. And then you can kind of see like the before and after. So you can see me toggle it on and off of what it used to look like and what it looks like now. Um, and I think it looks super cute and like dreamy and like very Avena and they look awesome. And yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah. Oh, yeah. And then the contrast, too. I think that's the other last thing I messed with. So the contrast also helps that dreamy look. Usually you lower the contrast. Like if you're goth, you want to do like high contrast if or maybe. But it's up to you. But if you're like more dreamy kawaii, like you do low contrast and it makes the photo look kind of like really, really surreal and cute. So, yeah, that's like one of the things that I did. Um, also, last thing I did was you can like actually fix like the makeup too. like maybe your makeup like after you've done all this kind of got washed away. So you can do selective edits and you just literally do it with your finger. <laughs> um, you select where you where you wanna go and then like you can change your, your lipstick color. I know the teeth is like um, changing too, but I'll erase that away. Cause what, once you select the area, you can zoom in and then you can erase what you don't need. So like the teeth came out purple. So I, I like have to erase it um, so that it goes back to like the white color uh yeah so then now you see like she has like purple lips they have purple lipstick so yeah um yeah so that's that's that and that's yeah that's that's how you edit the photo so it looks super cute and dreamy and i hope you learn <laughs> like you know how to fix fix your fix your photos and um yeah mess with like i was messing with the lipstick a little bit more because i'm like oh maybe that's not the right color and you can you can kind of see how that all works thank you for letting me use your photo Avina. you look amazing <laughs> but um they're like super awesome and their stuff looks really like good so i i was like i felt privileged i could like you know edit their photo um so yeah you can see the before and after of how i get there yeah, so that's that. Uh, my phone, my phone was dying while I was working on it. Um, okay, so we can like, uh, I will go back to sharing my screen. Um, yeah, and then I think that's is that. Yeah, that's the last of it. So that's the last of it. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. If there's anything that you like, don't 
understand or like you want more insight on um this is like the question and answer part so it says question for later i've been looking on look out for a good goose any works for a good one so actually the amazon i i had one that broke and i was i got the am i know it's like amazon i got the amazon basics one um it's super sturdy like it's really 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 sturdy i was like really shocked because the other one i had yeah it broke but it was a cheaper one so i don't know if that's why i bought like there was an amazon basics one um that was 20 bucks and it's really really sturdy uh and i haven't had any issues with it breaking or anything like that yet and i think they have like a warranty on those so if they like break they'll replace them um so you can do that but yeah let me know if you have any questions uh how to look like mana shoot out the nose or does anyone know a place to find good presets that are good for j fashion i'm lazy a lot of these free presets i find a lot of very like instagram before so it doesn't look good with j fashion i so i agree like you can find presets like literally you can go online and google a million and ten um lightroom presets and i use some presets but the thing is is that i rather create my own because what's going to, and it's up to you, it's just what's going to end up happening is like, you know how you're saying like, there's like that influencer, Instagram influencer style versus a J fashion style. If you're familiar with J fashion, I think you're going to be a better authority on making a filter that is work that works for J fashion compared to someone who's not in J fashion that you're going to be buying these filters from. So if I were you, I would definitely play around on um, Lightroom and make like your perfect filter because what you can do is you can save it as a preset and then now you have your own preset and you won't have other people um, kind of having the same preset as you because sometimes I see it where I'm like scrolling my feed and I'm like, oh, you're using Lightroom preset 3585, cool. Oh, this person's also using Lightroom preset 3585. Like, you know, and then it looks really generic where if you at least try to make your own uh, and you can always keep it like whatever you do, you can always keep that preset and it's yours and it's original to you. So that's kind of cool. That, that'd be my advice. But um, there's tons of websites. If you just Google like uh, mobile preset uh, for Lightroom. So yeah. Anyone else? Do you have any camera lens focal life preferences for sale portraits? Yeah, I do. So I it depends. I use a 16 to 50 millimeter. That's like the standard kind of one that comes with it. That one's okay. My personal favorite that I bought was a 50 millimeter. So 50 millimeter is the lens that tends to get used the most for actually street snaps, um, which is really interesting, but it's also used a lot for portraiture. Um, I think it's the one that's so 50 millimeter is supposed to be the closest to the curvature of your eye. So it's usually the one that is probably the most true um, and you'll see, like, I've seen it, like, sometimes I'll see a photo of myself and I'm kind of just like, oh, like, I don't like that lens. And then I remember I was shot with like a 50 millimeter lens and I was like, oh my God, that looks exactly like it looks so much better. It looks a lot like me. So I definitely recommend, um, and have a preference and a partiality to 50 millimeter, just a straight 50 millimeter. The only thing is you have to be like 50 feet away from <laughs> your subject when you have to shoot them, which is the only downside, but I think it's worth it because you just look your best, I feel like. I think people, almost everyone looks really good when they're shot in front of a 50 millimeter, um, in my opinion. So, yeah. How do you think of creative ideas for photography? How do you make time for it? Um, so usually, like, I was, like, when I was joking about that Cardi B thing, like, I wasn't kidding. Like, I'll just, like, look at what, I like to look at celebrities, like, and what they're doing in fashion. I don't really care about like their personal lives, but when it comes to like, oh, they did a Vogue cover. Oh, they did this cover, the other cover. Um, I look a lot at that. I also look at like Tim Walker. I look at other like David LaChapelle. Like there's tons of photographers that I also look look at for inspiration. Um, movies too. Sometimes like I'll see a, like a, I'll, I, I'm a really big movie person. So I'll see like a movie where I'm like, whoa, that scene is so cool. I want to make a photo that looks similar to that scene. Um, so that's kind of like, where I come up with all the ideas. So like movies, celebrities, the Cardi B thing I was joking about cause she had that really long dress and she looked like she was like 80 feet tall. And I was like, I wanna look 80 feet tall. I wanna be 80 feet tall Phantom King. Um, I'm super like into fantasy too. So I pull like fantasy tropes, like, you know, kings and ghosts and like knights and, and things like that um, into my photography in general. So I think, yeah, oh, and then how do I make time for it? I, what I decided to do, um, especially recently is that I, I pick a day that's going to be a shoot day and I just try to do as much as I can possibly do within that one day. So I will, now I'm taking videos, now I'm taking photos 
and changing outfits. I kind of try to limit it to like maybe two or three outfits. Sometimes I can only get one outfit done. And then I'm like, well, that's all I could do. So I just try to do as much as I can in one day. Um, and I try to hold myself accountable. I'm trying to have those shoot days more often where I just do like one day a week or one day every two weeks where I'm going to like just shoot a bunch of stuff. And then um, I also plan a lot around it so that when I actually have to shoot, I'm not like pulling my hair out, trying to figure out things. So um, sometimes what I'll do is like, like if I have an idea for a photograph, I'll do a test shot. So I'll like set up everything, not have my makeup, not have my anything done and just take a picture and say, okay, that shot works. And then on my phone, I'll do it on anything. And then I'll go later and uh, finally do the official, official shot or the official shoot afterwards. So yeah. Yeah. Do you... Yes, it's absolutely possible to do it with just a phone camera. Uh, it's super, 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 super easy. I will. I can't share the photos now, but there was a photo shoot I did recently where the photo on my phone came out better than the photo on the camera. I wanted to scream. I was like, "Are you kidding me?" Like, and that happens. But yeah, the photo came out better on the camera phone than it did with the. Uh, actual DSLR, like mirrorless DSLR. And then I think like with camera phone, I also use camera phones a lot to do my test shots. I can sometimes do it, use, use it to act, do my actual photography. Um, it's completely possible, especially now because like the technology is so good. And like these photos have like tons of like, you know, megapixels of like fidelity and detail. So I think it's totally, I, I, I think if you don't have any, um, fancy camera, you do not need it. I think it's more important to like get the color and the composition and the idea across than it is like, if you have the fanciest camera, I don't think it necessarily matters. It's just a personal preference. And it's also like, not just personal, but I know it's like a financial thing too. So I, I don't, I think that it's totally possible. So go for it, like experiment with your phone camera. Like it's, I, I wouldn't be able to do that. Like, you know, 10 years ago and now you can. So it's pretty awesome. I definitely would, would experiment with your phone. Uh, if you if that's all you have available, yeah, <laughs> I have a huge backlog. Yeah, go in Lightroom. Yeah, that's the thing. You could take like old photos and go crazy. Like you'd be like, oh my god, I'm gonna like put all these things and do this and do that and 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 add this this filter because you'd be surprised. Like you don't need to also take new photos. You can just take an old photo and say, mm, you know what, I really hate the way this is lit. Let me like redo it. Let me like refix it. Uh, and it's, it's, it's amazing. Like, I think I took a photo that was like three or four years old and I put like a filter on it and then like I fixed it up in Lightroom and it just brought so much life back to the photo. I thought it was like a mediocre photo and then I fixed it in Lightroom and I was like, whoa, this is an amazing photo. So definitely like, I think that's a cool thing about photography is that sometimes you can be like, oh, I don't like this. And then like visit it like six months later and then you fix it up and you're like, whoa, this is so cool. Like, I love it now. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> flip phones technology any any other any other <laughs> anymore sorry i'm also like reading the re i can kind of like read the read the oh wait hold on i'm so silly <laughs> there we go i'm gonna look through see if there's any other photos that you you have questions uh line camera oh what makes you do creative shots versus regular outfit shots um, so I feel like I always want to tell a story if I can, um, using fashion. Cause I feel like I can always just do an outfit shot and, um, it's just like, okay, here's, here's this cool outfit I put together. But I feel like when I get into the, the art of trying to tell a story is when, um, it, it pushes me to want to do more creative shots. Like, oh, I want to mess with the lighting or, oh, I want to mess with like the proportion or, oh, I want to like, you know, um, shoot in a location I've never shot before. or I want to build like a mini set. Uh, it challenges me kind of to go outside of the box and like also look at fashion differently because when you're just taking like a regular street snap, you can just like put on your clothes and that's it. But when you're doing like more creative or fashion oriented, like kind of editorial photography, you really want to think about like, um, it from a really artistic standpoint, like as far as like creating an image, it's kind of like making an illustration or making a, uh, yeah, like making, you know, a piece of art. Uh, yeah. So it's, it's one of those things where, uh, that's, that's what, that's more what it comes from. If I want to tell a story, like 
I'm a jealous lover. I'm a I'm a um, little Bo Peep, or I'm the, you know I'm just thinking of the different of different characters. I guess I want to be, and then figure out how to bring those characters or those styles or those outfits to life. Um, has how has the lockdown slash pandemic affected your style of shooting? Um, it has totally changed the way I shoot. I used to shoot outside. I used to shoot sometimes with friends. Um, I just shoot mostly indoors now. So I do a lot of studio photography mostly. And so like I'm learning how to build sets, how to kind of manage my time and how long shoots actually take and how to plan them. I'm actually getting more into building sets. So um, soon I'll be able to release a bunch of new photos. But even the last one I did for Danny Papatois, uh, I did like, I, I, you know, I was like, okay, I'm going to set up this like, you know, uh, <laughs> this this fabric and I have to do the graphics and I have to do a lot of prep work so I'm prepping a lot more for my shoots ahead of time where sometimes where I'm just doing a regular outfit shot I'll just like put on my outfit put on my makeup and take a picture um this is more like really thinking out the concept the idea uh it's becoming more conceptual which is kind of cool and kind of fun um and then it's a lot more indoors and because it's indoors I'm trying to do things like build uh practical things that I can incorporate into the photo shoot uh yeah how do you decide locations, backgrounds, or shoots? Um, before it used to be that like I'd walk around and I would Google, you know, oh nearest place to do photo shoot or nearest place to do this, or um, I would Google a lot of like parks. A lot of um, I'm still hesitant about like always shooting at graveyards, but like I'll Google, you know, graveyards, parks, like places to go. Um, I'm trying to get enough guts to like do that now, but. Um, for backgrounds, I do a lot of like research. So I'll go on Pinterest and pull a bunch of images of like what I want my photo shoot to be. And I'll decide like, oh, this will look really good on a clean white background, or this will look really good on a red background. Like, you know, if I'm doing Valentine's Day, obviously red hearts, like that's perfect. Um, I try to basically theme my backdrops against like what uh, the photo is going to be about and what the like the mood is going to be about. But uh, if I had like I usually just shoot on a white backdrop. Like I have like a really big giant white wall in my apartment that I'll shoot um, in front of. And then what I'll do is like if I want the, it to be colored, I'll go and post and like color and post. Um, I know some people who do really great things like they just collage the background, so they'll get a photo from online and just slap it onto the background. I think that's super cool. It's like a really um, it's a really really cool way to uh, edit your photos and kind of like tell a story if you don't necessarily have a big fancy backdrop to like shoot off of um you know i don't think i don't think it looks weird like some people do things where like superimpose themselves like four times into a photo like there's like oh there's four versions of me in a photo um things like that so yeah <laughs> uh oh my gosh yeah i thanks for the questions these are all really 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 great questions and i hope you have you have learned a lot uh so far um, yeah, I, everything that I, I'm doing is definitely suitable for mobile. I've tried it myself and it works fine. Um, it's not an issue. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 you comments. Do you have a dream place? <gasps> a dream place that I want to shoot at? Oh, yeah. Okay, like, <laughs> it's like a dream. My ridiculous dream place that I want to shoot at is like the Palace of Versailles. Like I would love to have a giant, like, whoops, a giant, like, not Rococo, but just like a street fashion meets like Rococo, like really extravagant over the top, like photo shoot in the Palace of Versailles. Like I would die if I could have a photo shoot um, there. And yeah, <laughs> that's like what I would, I would love to do. Um, if it was like a place that's not that big, I, I want it like there's like cathedrals and churches that I want to like shoot at. So <laughs> we need to make that shoot happen. Oh my God, I would like have like 30 people at the shoot and then like have all the staff and like everyone dressing cool. And yeah, like, like it can't just be Rococo, it has to be like street fashion meets Rococo. So yeah, I would, I would love to do that. Um, yeah. Yeah, oh, that's a great question. Any tips on edits where you can place yourself on another location, like front of the castle that's not Photoshop? Can Lightroom do that or just Pixar? So Lightroom, it's really difficult to do that on Lightroom. I don't think you can do it on Lightroom, but you can do it on Pixar. And I would definitely recommend Pixar. Um, any collage programs um, like Pixar work because it's not Photoshop, but you do have to pay for those, but that's why. Um, Pixar and uh, 
photo, I think the other the other one too. They're both really good um, at photoshopping you in front of a castle. Like Photo Leap is the other one. So PixArt, Photo Leap are really good. Um, I would definitely use them because it makes it super easy. You can just do everything on your phone. You do not need a computer. You do not need any fancy equipment. And there's tons of tutorials. Even if you open up the app, the app teaches you uh, how to actually you know, clip yourself out of a photo, like out of a white background and like throw it on a castle. So it's, it's, it's pretty easy to do, um, on those, on those apps. I definitely recommend it. Um, I want to try doing that, doing that myself too in the near future. Um, yeah. So I think, yeah, that's like lots, lots of information. Yeah. I hope, I hope like you guys get the, like, you know, the motivation to like try to do, um, some more fun creative shoots with your fashion because like you know outfit shots are really great um but if you just want to have like another excuse <laughs> um for you know your outfits or, or your looks and things like that i think like building really small sets re like really tiny like you don't need a lot of space um props are really important concepts are really important um yeah <laughs> And yeah, if you have any uh, feedback, we have a feedback form in the comment section. Um, if you could fill out, uh, that would be cool. And let me know what you think. <laughs> oh, that's funny. It's like, come up here and I'll take your picture instead. Yeah, I, I, I'm feeling a little, I am feeling a little bit burnt out personally um, of taking photos of only myself. So I want to eventually, when it's safe to do so, start shooting other people and styling other people because I feel like um, I've done it in the past and, and it's always really rewarding because I think people are like, whoa, you think I'm like so cool to do this and you dress me up like this and I didn't think I could look like this in photos. Like I've shot my friends and stuff like that and they're always like super happy with the photos and the way it looks. Yeah, mini tutorials. Yeah, yeah, mini tutorial. The audacity. Oh no, obviously you moved and now you're in trouble <laughs> in the according to the comment section. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll Aria once once everything is a little bit less ridiculous, I will like come come to New York and like style you up and shoot you and stuff like that. I think that'll be really fun. We can go to like the cloisters or something. It's like another photo area I want to go to. <laughs> Just ready to go to Paris and Versailles and make this photo shoot happen. One day, like we'll all like crowdfund this photo shoot and have like our big giant like comeback photo shoot <laughs> together where we all look amazing. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. I really appreciate it, uh, everyone. And I hope this was super informative um, and that you learned a lot. And I'll, um, yeah, I'll upload the, the presentation and stuff so you can kind of see what I was talking about. And uh, <laughs> hopefully if you guys get inspired, like let me know, tag me, show me your work. Um, I would love to see like kind of if, if you learn anything from this. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. I'm so happy. Yeah, I'm glad that uh everyone enjoyed the panel um but yeah so, all right i think i think i think i'm done <laughs>